you folks are all hanging in there. I know we've had some very exciting news here in California about our ability to come back online. So we're, we're getting pretty enthusiastic about that. Let me just see if I can um, mute this real quick. Okay, so I just um, wanted to invite you folks to start looking for me for unique talent that is emerging. So we are looking at, not next week because I'm pretty uh, well booked, but I thought, you know what, it would be a really great thing for us to allow those folks who really could use a little bit more exposure and are working really hard on their craft, whether it's an artist uh, within any art genre, sculpture, glass, or if you have someone who maybe is um, working as a chef and would like to have a little bit more, more exposure on that end, musicians. So take a look at your roster. I know you folks love the creatives as I do. And so you probably have some good suggestions. So let's start looking at that and uh, start emailing me. I know that you've been very um, diligent to keep that communication flow going. So with the changes coming up, we're hoping that we will be able to do appointment only very soon in the gallery. And I'm sure that we'll still have to practice social distancing, wear a mask, but we cannot wait to get this gallery open. We're just, oh, it's just time. So cross your fingers that the state of California keeps moving in that direction. But in the meantime, we have an amazing artist coming on the show today. And this is an artist that many of you who went to our gallery in Colorado, you probably saw his work there. We had it in Vegas for a while and in Beverly Hills and just hugely successful for us. And then as you guys know, we've downsized. We have the gallery in Solana Beach and we were not able to continue to carry it. But we have always been a big fan here at exclusive collections of this artist. And I felt that it was important to bring his work on because of all the artists we represent, his work really speaks to overcoming difficulty in life and, and learning how to push through in a positive manner. And you guys know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Fabio Napoleoni. He lives in Florida and he is gonna be coming on the show here in a minute. But I was just reflecting on the fact that in this time, in this pause that we've had a little time out, it's given us all an opportunity to really reevaluate what we want to spend the rest of our lives doing. And I think this artist points to that more than any other artist that I've worked with in the past, because that's really what his work is about. It's about love. It's about sharing that positivity. And so I hope that you're, I'm giving people a minute to start live streaming to come through here so you can watch. And um, I hope that you're ready for a really good show. So let me see if I can get Fabio online here. And there he is. Welcome to the show, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, me? perfect. I can hear you perfectly. Your screen looks great. How are you awesome. doing? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Just, uh, you know, living this uh, quarantining life and, and doing the best that I can from it. So, Sure. Yeah. How, how's it going in Florida? What, what's happening there? Is there any movement with opening things up? Well, it's, um, I know that um, I, since I live in Orlando, um, pretty central to the state, it's the, most of it seems to be the beaches. Everybody wants to get out of the beaches. Uh, so no matter in either direction, whether you go to Tampa or Daytona, it's about a 45 minutes to an hour away. We're not, you know, we don't do that. Um, but uh, here where we're so close to the parks, the parks are still closed. Um, and you're referring to the theme parks, right? Disney, yeah, the parks, all the Disney Universal properties. and Disney. Um, so they're still closed. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't heard from uh, the Pop Gallery because they're on Disney property. Uh, so I haven't heard yet when that's going to happen. But it's been, I've noticed, I was out a little while ago uh, shipping some packages. And I noticed that there are more people out. But I would say probably 8 out of 10 in, in this area here all have uh, a mask on. It just seems to be everybody's playing it safe and respecting uh, everybody else, safe distance outside of Orlando, different story. So, right. Well, who would have ever thought Disney of all places, like 
you know, you think of all of the places in the world and this idea of having Disneyland and Disney World just shut down is yeah. it's crazy, the craziest thing. That, that is for sure. And uh, it was like really with no hesitation. I think once it, you know, you saw it tick up a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand, I think Disney just realized, you know, this is a gigantic area where people from all over the world come and who knows. So they, they played it smart, I, you know, I think. Yeah, I wonder if uh, they shut down the China area in Epcot. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Funny joke. That was the first one to go. Yeah, probably. So share with the viewers. You've got a lot of, I'm seeing some of your fans come on here. So the word got out. But share with the folks that maybe didn't get a chance to see your work a little bit about how this all began, the character that you created. Sure. Um, so, um, like, it, it seems like uh, it was just yesterday, but uh, the, the inspiration behind it all, my daughter Lauren, uh, who will be 16 in two more weeks, um, it was, my wife was 20 weeks pregnant, and we were fortunate enough to have uh, better insurance than the average. Uh, she, was, she was up in the upper parts of the Walmart world, so she was able to get that sort of that 3D or you know, they could look at things a little bit different. And we noticed then that there was a, there was something not right with her heart. We went to see a specialist and this is when we were living in, in Maine at the time. We drove about four and a half hours to see a specialist and he, there was no, uh, no buttering anything. He just said, this is what she has. There's no medicine that's going to fix this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, uh, you, you, you can do all the prayers, you can do all the herbs, you can do, everything but this is what she's gonna just what she's gonna be born with we were fortunate enough that uh it wasn't bad that she needed to be you know taken out early she went to full term um when she was born five months later um i have to say that um i know some people question doctors i've never my experience with my daughter um i we've always put full faith in them, there were 110% on the positive and 110% on the negative of everything that could happen. And they were like the Nostradamus of what could occur. They pretty much- You got lucky. Ended. Oh yeah, they pretty much like at five months, at seven months. So at seven months, she ended up <clears throat> with a really bad infection. Everything they had done, basically her body rejected. Um, so we were rushed on, on Christmas Eve of the same year in 2004, we were rushed to the hospital. And she had two days later, uh, she ended up having her first uh, mitral valve replacement. Um, so from that point, we had basically lived at the hospital at Barbara Bush uh, Children's Hospital in Portland, Maine. Had lived there for about four and a half months. Wow. Uh, during that time, I wasn't working. My wife wasn't working. But again, she had a really, really good job through Walmart. They pretty much paid her that entire time she was gone. Um, and during that time, I just, uh, I started developing these goofy little characters, um, you know, missing ears, noses, not handsome in any way, shape or form. Um, and then, uh, when we got back to some, something normal, I guess, back to our, our home, um, I started, uh, posting, I was already selling on eBay, but I had transformed that art, art into more of a compassionate, something that evoked an emotion. You know, these little, these little sad guys holding on to a heart or a simple uh, tree with uh, all black and white with just a little red heart through it. Never mentioned, you know, that I had a daughter with a heart condition. But I noticed that my, you know, messages to me through eBay were going through the roof. And I, I was ecstatic. I was telling my wife two, two or three o'clock in the morning when she's sleeping, I was like, I just sold this pen and ink for $10. <laughs> and she was like, that's fantastic. Go to bed. So I kept doing that. Fast forward a few years later. Um, my daughter's now three. I'm sitting on, uh, I'm, I was working with abused children at the time. Uh, I've been on uh, the job for almost seven years. I'm uh, sitting watching TV, just laying on, on the floor. Lauren comes into the room, jumps on my stomach, gives me an umbilical hernia. Oh boy! And, and, oh yeah, it was horrible. So I could, I had to go without work for two months, but I only had one month worth of of sick time. Right. So the month caused me to sit at my table like I am right here in front of you, 
and draw something every single day, post it on eBay. I would write a little story that went along with it and I'd post it. Um, when I was able to go back to work, um, my wife said to me, <laughs> have you looked at your PayPal account? I hadn't. I was just selling art and enjoying the fact that people were buying it. So at the end of that month, uh, I noticed that I had made twice what I was making, you know, being uh, taking care of children, which a job that I, uh, I love. Um, and I was like, this is kind of weird. You know, that's how does that happen? So as I went back to work, I continued to do both the art and working with the kids. And I just had, I, I asked my wife, I was like, what are the chances that I could get done? You know, doing, I did it for almost six months before I actually took it for real. You know, I wasn't going to jump into it right away. I wanted some security. Um, and then she, like everything else in my life that I wanted to do, she was like, yeah, why not? So That's an amazing story. And yeah. it's interesting kind of how that tragedy, and I, I remember talking to you in the gallery a few times that, this wasn't something that it was a one and done where your daughter got this cure and then that you never had to worry ever again about it. No, it continues. If she's, uh, she, like I said, she's 16 now. She has two, she has a prosthetic. Uh, for you, by looking at her, you wouldn't know. She looks just like your average 16 year old girl. Her hair is jet black right now with pink and purple streaks. She does her, <laughs> all kinds of weird stuff. She's experimenting with everything, but um, <clears throat> no, she, she'll have that condition. Um, she'll have a prosthetic two prosthetic valves and a pacemaker as well. She takes medicine every day. Um, she'll, she'll face another surgery as her, as she gets a little bigger, the valve, uh, the mitral valve doesn't grow. So that will, you know, they'll have to replace that. And then hopefully, you know, if she stays, my mother is very small. So is my wife. And if she stays tiny, like five, two or so, then she'll, that, that'll be the last one. Yeah, I just remember talking to you and, you know, so many people would come into the gallery and just immediately have an emotional um, attachment to your work. And I think it had a lot to do with your emotion as you were creating the work. Yeah, for sure. That is that is the one thing I've um, I experienced right from the, from the beginning. And so in, in 2000, when, when I started seriously doing it as a full time job. Um, I noticed that I, I was telling the story without saying that it was my daughter. This is where the inspiration came from. And that was, that worked really, really great. And then, um, in 2008, I got into a couple of galleries. The first two was pop gallery and fascination street. And I did notice that right away. That was the one thing that everybody, there's every person that stands in front of me has something in common, not with just me, but the person behind them and the person behind them. And over the past 12 years, I have noticed the people that stand in line, once they go past me, now they've developed a friendship with the person behind them. And they're still in touch with each other. And then sometimes they'll travel from different parts of the country, meet each other in L.A. or Vegas or here in Orlando, and they haven't seen each other since last time they were at a show. These are your fans, right, and collectors. Yeah, and it's, the, it's just it's the wackiest thing because outside of – what they all have in common is me, but then they have other things like a, a friendship, a true friendship has grown with those I people. Love that. That's just That's something amazing. I never expected. And it's just, it's, it's an, uh, rewarding, it's super rewarding. Well, let's see some of the artwork because well, some people don't um, haven't seen have it. All my stuff's everywhere. This, this is my, this is my primary space here. It's okay, I'm going to minimize my, my screen so people can really get the full. There we go. So I have, uh, so this is my, my garage. I have my printers in here. The whole entire station's here. My bike is up there. I'm sure you have plenty of those way back there. 15 files of where I store all the prints. Um, so I've been working on pieces. I can't show them all because some of them are going to a show. But I know sure. that I, I posted this one on, on, um, on Instagram. Uh, and it's basically Mars and Evo at the edge of a cliff with all these little hearts sitting here. And this piece is called uh, I'm Still Here. Um, and I just, um, I don't know, I just had a reading um, everybody's messages and posts on, on Facebook and inspired me to, I don't know, just to come up with that. That, you know, that at that edge of the cliff where you came so close, but you didn't go over. You know, you're, you're still there. And his pose is with his arms up in the air, his little pockets open, his hearts are flowing out. 
and then just the five hearts, which I always put, I try to rotate everything around five because my daughter's had five major heart surgeries. Um, so those little hearts are there as, as his sort of his family or support and his friends. Um, so that's the one piece uh, that I, I can show for sure. And then some of your people watching may know this was the conversation you and I had yesterday. I released this piece uh, two weeks ago, um, and it's, uh, it's called The Perfect Pair. And it's my character Dragon Boy, which is based on my son. And his imaginary friend, Draco. And uh, Dragon Boy has a little t-shirt that says weirdo on it. And Draco's shirt says, I like weirdos. So <laughs> it, uh, it just is, it was huge and successful. Everybody liked it. Um, hey, can we go back to Mars and Evo? Because most people don't, I mean, we don't, how did he come about? And oh, let so, me get a, a little bit closer look at him. No, I can't. See, I can pick up my phone here. There we go. There's that guy. I love him. So that's Marcinivo. And Marcinivo um, basically came to life during the, those, those four months that we were um, in the hospital. And he is a he is, um, combination of uh, other characters, but mostly I wanted him to be a, a used rag doll that everybody can, can uh, associate with. And when they look at the artwork, you know, they've asked me, is this you? Well, it, it isn't me because if you're standing in, in front of me and you're telling me a story about your life and the reason you're buying this art is because he's actually you. You see yourself in, in this. There's something here that's pulling at your, at your heartstrings and evoking an emotion that it's not about my life. It's about your life. And I think that's, he's, that's the reason why he's the favorite. There's other characters I have that all will you know, tug at people, but he is the one that doesn't matter. I've had men close to 70 years old and eight year old kids that stand in front of me with tears running down their faces because they love this character. And I, it's hard for me, you know, a 67 year old man telling me about the loss of his wife and now he had to raise his two children and he buys a piece with Marcin Evo in it because it reminds him of her. It's just, it's a, it's a thing that I, I, uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's an overwhelming feeling when I go to shows and people share and, their stories. And which was the one that you had where it's Mars and Evo, and then there's some signs, and he's got like a I think he's got a little backpack on, and and I forgot the name of it, oh, but yeah, I just that was, love that. that. Was actually, um, that was an exclusive. Um, I think it was for you guys when you guys were in in, in Vegas or. That was called Welcome to the Unknown. That, that yes, piece. that was it. And I have that piece. But I have to find a place for it, but I still have one of those. I love um, that piece. And uh, so that was uh, <laughs> that was the beginning of um, when I decided to venture off on my own and become a self-published artist. That's how that was in that picture. That that is me because that is how I felt at the time. I was picking up the things that belonged to me in my little knapsack, which wasn't much. And then I was going from a very colorful piece. You notice how he's walking into white. That was the unknown for me. So I didn't know where I was going. And, I, and then I ended up working with you. And it's, it's my career went off on a, on a more positive path. That's after great. I went on my own. Yeah. Well, let's see something. Do you have some other pieces in there that you can give us? The, you don't have to show us the show pieces. And just for the folks who are watching, yeah, let me, uh, let me the reason that. artists normally won't show pieces that are going to show, especially an artist like this, is because anybody who sees it is going to want that piece, and then there can be people, you know, fighting over it and all these types of things. I have some pen and inks right over here that I, I will I'll show you those. Okay. It's always great to be able to go into an artist studio. And this is one thing I think the COVID has brought us is the ability to get intimate. Okay, so it's in speaking of the, the virus, this is a, I've done a couple of funny little things on, um, that had to do with that. So for instance, on this one here, right? I did, um, there's my Dragon Boy and Draco smashing the virus with the little hammer at the bottom. Which is just, it, it's a little take on that, opposed to it being so doom and gloom. And the same thing with this one. Here, it's them. Oh, like, you know, like a little bit when they cup, when they cup things, and then you let it go, and then 
his psychic is going to smash it. And then here's Dragon Boy 2 playing his uh, air guitar on his, on his broom. So he's got his whole imagination thing happening. Um, and then we have Leo and Marcin Evo sitting there. And, that, and then uh, Leo appears in a lot of pieces, always as courage. So in this piece, you know, that's, you really don't know what's happening between them, but then the courage is coming in and they're both welcoming each other. Um, and a lot of these pen and inks, there's, they're just uh, basically watercolored, and there's always a splash of red in there. I throw that in there again. There's always a heart and everything because of because of Lauren. Because I, if if I would have had a a child, very healthy child, I'm not quite sure where I would be today. You know, I don't know yeah, if that was. That's the irony of life. Yeah, it's it's funny. Um, and then here's, here's three new characters. This is a little punk band made out of uh, little pigs. Oh, that's great. And I love how you're evolving into some new characters. I mean, everybody loves to add on to their collection with new works, and those are wonderful. Yeah, it's uh, and, um, and in this last one here, again, it's uh, this is Remy, the little elephant. And then there's Leo in the middle, and then there's Stretch here, the little giraffe. Love then, those. So in this, in this case, so the, the only thing that's painted is the little tiny cupcake at the bottom. So, oh, that's amazing. But yeah, so those things are done and, and um, everything else. This is still has to be packed and, and stuff like that. But uh, So when uh, is your next show, by the way? Um, well, it's supposed to be at, uh, at Fascination Street in Denver. But after speaking nice. with Aaron there, we just decided I think it's, it's best not to um, just invite that many people into one closed area. And Colorado doesn't really know how many they can have in the gallery at one time. So in a majority of my shows, there's always at least 30 people in such a closed, confined area. You don't want to, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. And, and I'm so used to getting up and shaking hands and hugging people. And it would just be weird for me not to do that. I think it sets a, a different tone to a show that I just don't, I don't want to do that and leave someone with that impression. Yeah. It's going to be tough when we do, when we all are opening up oh, yeah. again because you know, we will give the elbow, but it's not quite the same as the hug for sure. And, you know, and you, you have a good collector that comes and flies in or drives a long distance and they see you, you know, they like that handshake, the, the slight hug, you know, the having a cocktail with them. There's, that's something that, you know, it's memorable for us as artists, but I know that it's, it's memorable for them too. That's something that they carry on and tell, and then you see them again and their relationship or a friendship sure. develops over, you know, over a decade when you've seen someone that collects your artwork, you don't want to leave the impression of seeing them, waving to them. And I don't know, it just, it doesn't seem right to me. It's true. And you know, it's interesting, the work that you're creating now is, um, it's historic because you, you're actually taking material from what we're dealing with right now with this COVID thing, you're incorporating that into your work. That's going to be here forever as a historic document of, what you, one artist who your works are affecting the world, what you're extracting and now creating. So it's always, to me, the thing about art that's so incredible is the great artists that go down in history, they're taking a snapshot of what's happening, but they're creating it in such a way that it becomes in inspiring to people like us who are looking at your work. Well, it's thank you. And I, I think... Um it's equally, I equally feed off uh, the collectors and, and the fans too. I'm a, I'm a quiet lurker of you know, social media and my fan page. I don't always comment, but I do read. Um, and I love the interactions back and forth. It's amazing what people will share with each other. Um, so it's, and I read that. And in, at times that, in, that inspires me too, because I'll, I'll, I'll start thinking, I'm like, Oh my God, that's a, that's a great point. I never thought of, you, you know, the, like the effect of um, uh, healthcare workers and the nurses and all these people that you just see them, you don't, you know, pay attention, but all of a sudden they're in, here they are, you know, and tackling 10 patients a day is one thing, but when you're asking to do a hundred, that's a completely different, you know, different scenario. And then you have to go home with that. So I, I, I watch and I listen. And so a lot of these little things come from those conversations that I read or just little, just subtle notes 
from people's feelings. They need Leo. Yeah. So that's well. It's I did a um, um, sort of Marcin Ebo. It's on a. It's on my iPad. It's I, I actually haven't drawn it. Uh, but it's he's hugging the world, and he's got a, he's got the mask on, and the world's got a giant band aid going across it. And then Leo's on the up on the other side. You know, they're sort of giving a little. Oh little my band-aid. gosh! Where can we see that? Is that on that's, your website? Uh, I want to say it's on Instagram. I think I posted okay. on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I've got to see that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. And then the reaction to it is, it's kind of crazy. Cause I, I'm sure you, the, you know, how the Instagram thing is you, you post something and you see, you know, might have three, 400 likes. And then when you look at the actual amount of people that have viewed it, but didn't hit the like that I viewed it or then went on to other avenues to look at your work or visit your website or, and then, you know, you have 400 here, but it's 22,000 over here. And you're like, that's wow. Crazy. Yeah. So it's it's crazy that that many people see it and then follow and go and well, it's it. quite an impact. And you know what's really interesting about your work is that it there there is a childlike simplicity in it, but the impact emotionally, um, it's overwhelming when you stand in front of your work. So you really have taken that experience of what you dealt with as a father. And that tragedy of wondering, okay, what's going to happen? And you took that and now you weaved it into this creativity that everybody else is really benefiting from something you had to go through. And I think that's something we right now need more than ever. Yes. You know, um, I think I'm fortunate in that sense because I, I think we all are feeling um, a little distress and, and worries and all kinds of things. And I, and I think it's, I'm just fortunate enough to be able to put it down on paper, you know, but I, and I also think that that also is the reason why I think people are attracted to it. I think if we all could do it, then we all would be doing it. I just, I just put things down. I, I see something gift. that appeals to me and then I, it might be the goofiest animal. Believe me, I, I've thought things were going to be a home run. And I'm sure you know this from your artists who are like, this thing is fantastic. This thing is going to be great. And then you put it out there and you're like, nobody gets excited. And then I sit here and do a doodle at two o'clock in the morning and post it and everybody freaks right out. And I'm like, I did that like two <laughs> minutes before I went to bed. You know, it's like, I, but it's, I think it's those unconscious thoughts that you're, you have this last minute idea, you put it down and you share it. And that's what you were looking, that's what you've been looking for the whole entire time. And I think people look, get to that they look at that and that, i think that's what they enjoy just sometimes the just rawness of it and it's the, the the this stuff is it is pretty simple i i you know it's uh and i i mean that in a sense not like michael the way he, i i don't know how you even look at that and sit there and put all these blobs together and make this fantastic i have no idea i wouldn't even begin i, I wouldn't even attempt it because it, it would just look like the rainbow vomited on a canvas. <laughs> and that would Nobody be it. Know how he does that. He, I don't even think he knows how he does it. I don't know. I sit there and I'm like, I know what it is, but how did it achieve to that point? I don't know. So it's, it's funny because I hear it from me and I'm like, come on, you can, you can draw this. This is okay. But yeah. But you know, it's not, it really, with art, it, it's not really the actual subject matter. And I think that's the one thing that the more you collect art, the more you understand that it's less about the, what you're seeing, the end product, as it is about the one human being that is living on the planet at any given time that's creating it. Because that, that gumbo, that mixture within the heart of a human being and what they've gone through is what allows them to project that. And really what makes great art is our interaction with it. If we didn't have the interaction, it would not It would be meaningless. Yeah, <clears throat> that is true. Uh, That's true. I think, uh, and you know, it's like with anything, practice and, and you have to love what you do. Um, you know, I've been, I've been with my wife 20, I'm gonna get this right, 27 years. Uh, we were married for 22, together for five. And, uh, I mean, from when I started doing this back in the mid nineties to actually becoming a full-time artist, um, she said to me, she goes, you've been doing this like your entire life. 
always. You know, you always have drawn. And I think it's a dedication to something you love, too. I think mm-hmm. that's what makes, you know, everybody successful. It's like I watched your, your interview with Todd. And, uh, and he's 100% correct. And I think that's the reason why Todd, Michael, uh, you know, everybody, uh, Everhart, all these guys. I think it's just uh, you love what you do. You're enjoying it. Whether you do sell a piece or not, you're still creating. You know, it's it's not it's not putting you down. You, we might have our little blocks here and there, but I think at the end of the day, we all enjoy what we do. You know, yeah, and, it comes uh, down to one thing: is passion. Talent. Yeah, exactly. You have you have to have a passion for it. You have to love it. You have to be able to you know challenge yourself. Everybody does. You know, you, if, right. you, if your artwork still looks the same 10, 20 years from now, you I think you lost that drive somewhere along the way. You know, I can see it in person, talk, you can see it in everybody who has moved on. You know, Everhart, I don't even know how he puts this stuff together either. That's mind-blowing to me. You know, you look at his stuff from 20 years ago, and then today you're like, what are you doing it's in there? It's true, and we see that evolution. Oh, yeah. Well, I just, I just want to thank you so much for putting in the dedication and continuing to move forward and to, you know, evolve yourself, but also just for the amount of hard effort that you put in, because I know that you are very – busy with doing shows, you're, you work every single day, and your work is really an inspiration to everybody who sees it. It really is. Well, um, you know, and I, thank you, um, because I, like, I, like I mentioned to you, I think uh, it's, you know, opposed to a gallery owner that's uh, nothing against the guys who I work with, but none of them are, like, doing this. You know, I think what you're doing here is really, really good. You're still... You're pointing out everybody that's in the art business, what they do, stories behind them. And there are people that I've seen this a thousand times and there are people that are brand new and you're, you're welcoming that. And I, yeah, kudos to you and, and thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I guess I just, you know, with the gallery not being open, I realized how much I would miss interacting. So this is one way, even though, you know, I'm looking at a camera right now, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the love for the people. <laughs> Awesome. So thank you again, My pleasure. Um, thank you. folks. Make sure you go to Fabio's. We've got his uh, website here. He's also on Instagram, Facebook. Make sure you go and follow. You don't want to miss out on this artist. And if there's ever a time that you wanted to share some love with someone, take a look at his website. There are some amazing pieces that you can share with people. You know, Mother's Day. I think it's a little bit. Um, you know, I. Today's Wednesday. I think it'd be tough to get it there, but you can always send an email and say it's coming. So let's support the artists here. And uh, thank you again for being on the show. Thank you, Ruthanne. All right. Be blessed. Blessings to your family. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Fabio Napoleoni, I love his work. I wish we could have it back here in our gallery. Um, maybe, maybe if you guys uh, get on his social media, you can poke them a little bit. What happens is sometimes with galleries, we have regions that artists ha- already have relationships with galleries and we wanna be good neighbors. So we don't wanna uh, steal artists from other galleries, but boy, that'd be a good one. He's, um, he's really just profound. You, you go look at it, you, you guys can email me and let me uh, know what your thoughts are when you really get to see through all of the artwork. Um, Coming up Friday, Mother's Day is coming up here on Sunday. And so we are going to have a little treat. I'm going to go into my mom's studio and Isabella is going to be there. And we are literally going to cook up a little bit of enjoyment for you folks. Isabella is pretty handy in the kitchen, as is my mom and myself. So we thought we would put together a little makeshift cooking class of our own, since that's our other passion. And then we're going to get into the studio and take a look at some of the new works by Gloria Lee. It's, she's got some new things coming your way. And we, of course, weren't able to do the urban um, cityscape show. That's going to be coming up at some point. But um, if anybody knows Gloria, it, it never ends with her. It just keeps evolving, keeps evolving. So I thought it would be a really great time to just go in and uh, have a little bit of time with my daughter and with my mom. So um little homespun event, but keep in mind in the next couple weeks, I want to bring on some emerging artists. So please let me know if you have anyone. And um, in the meantime, 
keep your uh, spirits up. It looks like we've got a little bit of a window of light coming through. So I cannot wait to see you folks. Either way, I think we're going to keep this live streaming. We'll bring it down to one time a week. Once we are COVID free, we'll be able to bring artists in and have a live studio here in the gallery. So we're not going to go away completely Art of the City TV here live streaming on Facebook. So we'll see you on Friday. Invite your friends. And for all the moms out there, happy Mother's Day coming up. And we will see you again 1 p.m. right here. Facebook live streaming. Be blessed, folks.